So today we've got something a little bit different for you because we're going to get my old man involved. For those of you that don't know, my father is Paul Giaconelli. He's the one that started Romans over 25 years ago. He's still the owner of the business um, and he's still actively involved in running it. We like to call him the chairman. Uh, but he's got some very cool cars in his personal collection, including these two. Um, so we've got this, the F12 Berlinetta. Uh, he's recently actually just put this up for sale. It is on Roman's website. We'll put a link to it around there. Um, but it's without a doubt one of the most special and unique F12s to ever leave the factory. Um, and then here we've got his 812 Superfast, which he's recently just bought. Um, to replace the F12 and it's without a doubt one of the craziest specs and most expensive 812s ever built. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you around both cars and then we're going to sit down with my dad, discuss why he bought them, how he bought them, why he likes green so much and why he specs his cars up so high. Okay, so I'll walk you around the F12 first. Um, so this car has been part of Ferrari's personalization program, so it's got lots of unique touches. Um, so the paint is part of the extra Campagnaro range that Ferrari do, it's called Verde Scuro. Um, it's the same paint that's also on the 812 Superfast. Um, but what is distinctive to this car is obviously this factory painted stripe. Um, you can see that it's a paler green to the, to the outside color. Um, it's called Verde Chiaro. Personally, I think it works really well. And together with the paint, it actually costs £20,000, so not cheap. I reckon it's probably the only F12 in the world that has that combination. Onto the wheels, because these are unique as well. Yes, they're the 20-inch forged rims that Ferrari do as an upgrade, but if you look closely, you'll see all the front of the spokes are painted in green to match the body colour of the car. Obviously not a wheel you want to curb. So this car's got the Scuderia Shields, which are an option, um, but another unique thing on this car is the carbon fiber underdoor covers. So if you look closely, you'll see all the carbon is tinted in green. Again, a unique part of the personalization program, which just, you know, back in 2013, you didn't get that very often when, when they built F12s, uh, but this car has it. Finally, there's not a load more to show you on the exterior, but you'll see the stripe goes all the way from the roof, all the way down the rear rear bumper. Um, but what I really want to show you next is the engine bay, because that's what really makes this car extra special. This engine bay is incredible. Now I've been with my dad in this car at car shows when he literally lifts the engine bonnet and people just swarm around this engine bay. So you've got carbon fiber everywhere not only carbon fiber but it's all green colored carbon fiber it looks amazing um, and down here now you will see quite a few ferraris with engine bays signed by the factory workers that built the car but what you won't see is an engine bay signed by fernando alonso felipe massa the two formula one drivers for ferrari at the time and luca montezemolo the chairman and president of ferrari that is something money just cannot buy so the chances are you would have never seen a Ferrari interior quite like this. Um, so first off the colors, so you've got Sabia, um, you have Sabia seats, Sabia on the lower dashboard, uh, Sabia central tunnel, you have a little bit of Sabia on the doors as well. And that's combining with Chocolato. Um, so you have chocolate steering wheel, upper dashboard, chocolate whole roof linings in chocolate, most of the doors as well. And then you have chocolate Alcantara for all the foot wells. Also on the luggage uh, bench back here is all in chocolate Alcantara. Um, then you're carrying on the green theme from the exterior. Um, so you've got green piping throughout and you have these green Daytona seat stripes. Um, and then obviously you would have seen all the green carbon fiber. So it obviously costs a lot to get carbon fiber options and then costs another load of money to have them all in green carbon. So you've got that on the steering wheel with the LEDs, all through the central tunnel and the central bridge, dashboard inserts all in green carbon. You've got a big piece of green carbon here on the doors. You've got it on the inner sill trims, also on the rear bench trim too. 
So this, it might not be to everybody's taste, but what's damn right certain is this is super unique, very special, and you'll never find another F12 spec quite like this. So the F12 Berlinetta is one of a kind, but this, in this spec, the A12 Superfast takes things to a whole nother level. The list price of this car is 425,000 pounds. To put that into perspective, the base price of the car without options is £262,000. So that is a hell of a lot of options. That's my dad for you. Um, so we'll walk you around it. So the paint, same as the F12, Verde Scuro. Um, without the stripe, it costs just over £15,000. Um, but this car's got loads and loads of exterior carbon. Um, so the front bumper inserts, which runs all up here on the lip as well, um, all in carbon fiber, but as you can see, it's matte green carbon fiber. So you pay a certain amount of carbon fiber, then you have to pay a whole lot extra for matte green carbon. You'll also notice the light green, uh, for what I call those dream lines, pay extra for that. Um, and they're also meant to match the stripe from the F12, the color Verde Chiaro. So just quickly on the wheels, these are the 20 inch racing wheels, the forged wheels that Ferrari do. And you'll just notice the little center cap also in matte green carbon fiber. Onto the Scuderia badges. So on the F12, the Scuderia badges cost just over a thousand pounds. But on this A12 Superfast, they're painted. Um, and they're obviously a lot bigger. They're actually airbrushed. The cost of these, 8,000 pounds. Is it worth it? you guys can decide. Again, like the F12, you've got the carbon fiber under door covers. Difference being, these are again in matte green carbon fiber. Also the Dreamline going the whole way across. I think you pay about 7,000 pounds for Dreamlines for the whole, for the whole package. Um, onto the rear of the car. So you've got this little bit of carbon fiber here, the rear boot trim, a nice little part there. But then you've got this huge carbon fiber rear diffuser. Again, carrying on the theme, all in matte green carbon fiber. Got the Dreamline again here, finishing it off. So that's it of the exterior. Let's show you the engine bay. So again, we have the beautiful V12 engine. And like the F12, we have the whole engine bay in carbon fiber. The difference here on the 812, carrying on the theme from the rest of the car, is that all the carbon is in matte green. So I think it costs about 10,000 pounds to have the engine bay and the filter box covers in normal carbon, but you have to add an extra 30% to the cost if you want carbon in green. That goes for all the carbon fiber options. Now you're starting to realize how we're getting to 425,000 pounds. Okay, so the interior on this 812 Superfast. So as you can see, my dad's gone with a slightly sportier, more understated feel than the F12. The big difference being we've gone with carbon fiber racing seats instead of the full electric seats on the F12. Um, so you have these leather bolsters with the perforated Alcantara and the Italian Tricolore central seat stripe. Um, so that theme sort of continues throughout. You've got it on the glove box, the Italian, and you also the Tricolore here on the central buttons. Um, so you've got also green stitching and green piping in lots of little places, um, but obviously, again, green colored carbon fiber like the F12, but this time uh, with the theme of the car, it's matte carbon fiber everywhere. So you've got that on the steering wheel, you've got it all through the central here on the dashboard, you've got this big section here on the door, and finally here on the rear boot trim. So again, part of the Ferrari's personalization program, as it says here, atelier as Ferrari call it, but yeah, this again is a wonderful place to be. So dad, it's pretty unusual for you to keep a car longer than a couple of months. You've had this F12 for just over two years and I know you're planning on keeping the 812 for a while. Um, so what, what, what's changed? I, th I think really I've grown up in this industry and most of the time I've driven cars that were always for sale. And it wasn't until I actually saw, saw that car the day we bought this green car, I thought I absolutely loved it. And I thought I'm fed up jumping in and out of different cars, I'm going to drive this car all the time really. Um, and that's how it began. And from then, 
uh, it's digressed into the 812 which I feel the same about so having two years gone by where I've had my own car all the time I've quite enjoyed it and I think I'll probably stick with the 812 now. Yeah I mean so the F12 came to us as part of a three car deal didn't it? Uh, very much what happened was um, the, we got a call saying that a collector wanted to sell a collection of cars, which was three cars, uh, a LaFerrari, a perfect car, uh, and a Perta 599 that was one of only eight right-hand drive cars in the world, and of course, this little baby. And um, I sold the other two cars, but I couldn't bring myself to part with that. I liked it so much because green is my favorite color, and I decided that I'd keep it, drive it, enjoy it, which I have done, and it wasn't until Ferrari offered to build an 812 in a similar spec for me that I decided to change it. Otherwise, I'd still be with it now. Yeah. And to be fair, when that first came, I thought, oh yeah, you'll run it a month, two months, and then you just kept it. And I know, you know, it, wasn't, it was kept at your house, it wasn't kept in storage. I know you had people making you offers, they wanted to buy off you, and you were like, no, nope, I'm keeping this. Um, so I it think it's quite... the nicest Ferrari that I've ever owned. Um, and I think the, the passion for it was brought about by the fact it was built to open the Atelier shop. It was signed by Alonso Massa Montezelio. There's a plaque under the bonnet. It was unique in as much as it's, all the carbon is green. Uh, and I think that the fact that it was so special made me feel special when I was driving it. And I only really used it on days when I sort of felt like a feel good day and got in the car and the whole day seemed to change because I was in this car. I know it sounds a bit ridiculous, but that's how it felt. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's, you've obviously got a few other cars. Uh, you've got a green Range Rover, you've got a green Defender uh, Twisted, which you use a lot. The green comes from my wife, whose favorite color is green, who very much got me into green in the first place. And now I've become quite affectionate to the color. And, uh, I would choose it over most cars because most Ferraris that we sell, I mean, really are always red. Um, and I just think it's different. Not black, yeah, of course, but uh, so many people have commented to me about the colour of the car. And I think that when you're in a dealership ordering a car from a small colour swatch, you don't quite realise how beautiful it can look in some of the very many special colours that they do. And uh, when I saw this car, I had the benefit of seeing it in the flesh completely done so when I went to order the 812 and I went with my with your younger brother we went to the factory together and uh, we sat there specking it it was an amazing experience we got completely carried away ordering special bits and personalizing the car to degree it ended up being super expensive but somehow it didn't matter because I knew there would never be another one like it I knew that when I looked at it it would be special I was never going to pull up beside someone else with exactly the same car. And that's really uh, why I feel so close to the car, why, why I won't sell it. I, I won't sell so it. So you didn't want to go for the Stripe on the 812? I, I believe I've got a GTS in the same 812 coming eventually, and I believe they would do a lightweight, and when the lightweight comes, we'll probably put the Stripe on it. But for now, I left it without the stripe. I like the stripe. I, I've got yeah, it's good. It was already on there, in fairness. Yeah. But I guess that's the difference, is that you, you didn't spec that car. It came no, as part no, of it. Came, it, was, it was originally spec as a, an example of how special Atelier could make a car. And it was for the opening of their shop in Knightsbridge. And hence, uh, I remember once when we went to Supercar Sunday at Goodwood, and how many people were around the car when we opened the bonnet and they saw all the signatures of such important people within the name Ferrari, uh, Montezelio, um, Alonso, Massa, yeah. uh, and everybody was staggered by the fact that these three people had signed this engine bay mm. and of the pack in the car. And it made me feel good yeah. as well. I, was, I said it earlier in the video how literally people would swarm to that engine bay. Obviously you've got the signatures but you've also got the all the gloss green carbon in there is, is, is a pretty incredible sight. But this time we went, uh, when we were there at Atelier uh, in, in Marinello, we thought to go a little different was to make the carbon matte, which is unusual, and uh, it looks superb inside the car. 
and it was the girl, uh, which I found quite odd that it would be girls in charge of that department in Italy deciding on how a car should look and there is, uh, they have a, a huge amount of passion in making a car special and they quite, I think they enjoyed it as much as I did. Yeah. Uh, what well, do they tell you the price as you're going along? No, no that, bit, that, that bit comes as a shock t two months later. Uh, oh, really? By that time you've had pictures and uh, uh, emails explaining how special the car will be and it's what do you take off to bring the price down, you can't bring yourself to do it. Mm. Well, I think that's how some sure, of the I think if I was there I probably would have somehow got you to keep the price down. Probably, but your younger <laughs> brother has got the same amount of passion as me and uh, thought money wasn't the object, making the car special was the object. So do you think that F what will happen to the F12s and do you think these are going to be future classic? I think they should be because V12 engines will stop and when they stop they will be part of motoring history um, and I think that that car in particular is very low mileage still, it's still under a thousand miles. I think it will go up because one, the names that assigned it, the specification of it and just the look of it, it will, it will go up in value. I wouldn't say it will go up as much as some of the very old cars like the Daytonas and the LaFerraris and the 28 GTOs, it won't do that. But it will always be a pretty sound investment, it shouldn't continue to go down. Uh, and I think that, you know, the F12, the 812, I should say, will probably be the end of V12 engines. Yeah. Well, let's say after the 812, obviously you've got the convertible, then you've got the, the lightweight version, they reckon that will be I think it's probably one. true. I mean, there's no guarantees, but no. I, I think that will be true. And at that point, you'll see these figures the toughening up in price. Yeah, because yeah, the next one after that is the SF90, which is hybrid. So I think that's going to yeah. be... Gonna I'm be not really a on. hybrid person. I'm not, a, you know, I don't know, perhaps I'm too old, but uh, I think that uh, a B12 engine, I think this car is for a young man and an older man. Uh, I think some of the Ferraris, uh, the, 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 the pieces and things are for people that are much younger. Uh, this is like a man's car. Yeah, it's, it's a gentleman's car, but, yeah. but I know quite a lot of young guys that have got F12s as well. It's, it's, it's still a cool car. And I think with the shape and it, just the whole look of it, I think the F12 will be sort of a future, future classic. Um, the the 812, shape. I think, took a little bit more, well, it's more sort of defined isn't it it's a little bit more I think when you get in it uh, uh, the thing about that car is a very a very good friend and good customer once told me when you know a car is special is when you're driving it and you're so excited that your toes curl up as you drive it because it's so exciting to be in and for me that's exactly what that car does I, my, when I get in it I feel good I feel like I need to be smart when I get in it and, uh, and, and my, my toes do curl up as I drive away and I hear the noise and I feel the power. It's a great feeling. And it's a feeling that I've only ever got from Ferraris. But you, you get that in the A12? Yeah, though? I get exactly that. But it, it's a very hard drive. If you said to me which of those two cars is the best, I don't know. They look very similar. They drive very similar. One's a later model than the other. The other one's got the signatures. I don't know which is the better car. On one day I would say it was this car, and on the next day I would say it's that car, so I really don't know the answer. Not honestly, yeah. anyway. I remember the, the, the day you picked up, because it, it went for full PPF at NVN Motorworks, and you drove it back in the pouring rain. Oh. I remember you going back and saying, I'm not sure about this car. Yeah, like, I know. thought you were going to die in it. Uh, it was because I was driving down the motorway, uh, the M25, and it poured down with rain, and I couldn't remember where the wiper switch was, and I couldn't sort it out as I was driving on getting used to the car. But when I got back and drove it the next day in the drive, I thought, my God, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, uh, secondly, you're right. But I did feel that with that car, and I still do, and I'll be sad when it goes. I mean, I'm looking forward to meeting whoever's going to own it next, and hope they enjoy it as much as I did. But um, if it wasn't for a space and ultimately money, I would keep them both. But they are a bit similar. Yeah, you're not exactly cars. making no. money on that. No, car, not but at all. It's, um, sure. but, it's, but it's very much available, and uh, I'm sure someone, someone will buy. Hopefully so.